BBC News. Thank you very much, Chris. That was Chris Aldridge with the six o'clock news. BBC News is going to continue here on Radio 4 with Evan Davis and with me, Michelle Hussein, as we continue to follow the reports about the Queen's health. The Queen, as we know, has been under medical supervision at Balmoral, her home in Scotland. That's what we know from earlier statements from Buckingham Palace. And her children are all now with her. All four of the Queen's children and also Prince William uh, have travelled to Balmoral to be with her. And we know that the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, is on his way. These are the reports that we've been following really throughout the entire course of the afternoon. And there have been many good wishes expressed for the Queen's support for her, uh, prayers for her, people's thoughts, political leaders, religious leaders, many people's thoughts and prayers are with her and her family at this time. We uh, knew of the concern of her doctors that was made public by the palace earlier today and that was uh, how all of this developed. Our royal correspondent Johnny Diamond is here in the studio with us. Bring us up to date, Johnny. A, a, A curious day, a day of intensity and yet not an enormous amount of information. Um, Instead, just signs and signals, Michelle, of the seriousness of the situation. Uh, First, that statement at just after half past 12 today from Buckingham Palace itself, pretty extraordinary, given how jealously the palace guards information about the Queen's health. Then, what, 40 minutes later, um, uh, talk in the Commons, a note passed by Nadim Zahawi uh, to the Prime Minister, um, and, and suddenly a change of mood within the House of Commons um, and a statement from the Speaker himself to the Commons relatively shortly after that, a brief statement extending best wishes um, of the House to the Queen and to the Royal Family. Again, a sign that things were not as they were and that this was a very different kind of day. Um, and, And then word coming out from various different parts of the palace, different sources in the palace, that um, members of the royal family, senior members of the royal family, all of them changing their plans so they could move towards Balmoral, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, Prince Charles, um, uh, already in Scotland, quickly getting to Balmoral. Other senior members of the family, um, the um, uh, Prince Edward, Prince Andrew um, and Prince William flying up from RAF Northolt in an RAF plane. Johnny, thank you. We have just had news within the last few seconds from Buckingham Palace announcing the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. She was 96 years old. This is So far, the palace has not given any further details, but... This is the news that we've had, news of enormous significance for the entire country uh, and indeed beyond our borders as well, that the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. Well, that is momentous news, anticipated perhaps through the day as we had that concern this morning. I'll just read that statement. The royal family... um, tweeted the statement just one minute ago. The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. So there we have that news. Johnny, you were just absorbing that. The nation is just uh, absorbing that. Um, Just tell us what happens now, Johnny, as we we do uh, understand what's just happened. Well, I mean, to be honest, Evan, we are in uncharted territory. Um, The thoughts of many will be, of course, confused, but also will turn to immediate members of the Queen's family. Um, And it is noticeable, of course, from the statement, the transition of power has happened immediately. The statement from Buckingham Palace refers to the King and the Queen Consort, who are at Balmoral and will return to London. The focus will gradually shift from Balmoral to London. Um, But right now, of course, we have seen over over the day the movement of members of the royal family to Balmoral. And and that is where the attention of the royal family and the attention of the nation will turn. The Queen remains there um, and the members of the royal family are there and and the thoughts of so many will be with them. Yeah. And Johnny, let's be clear, Charles is king 
from now. That, 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 hap- that, that handover occurs on the death of the previous monarch. That happens immediately. Um, and from this point on, he is the king. Um, and his wife, formerly the Duchess of Cornwall, is the Queen Consort. It's yet to be formally announced how he will uh, describe himself, uh, whether or not he will be known as King Charles III, uh, and we'll get that information later. But yes, he is now the king, uh, and um, the weight of that is now on his shoulders as the nation contemplates the change. And flags we see are being lowered at Buckingham Palace. We'll have uh, continuing coverage of this. Of course, we'll have a special programme coming up on BBC News, across BBC News, very shortly as we cover the death of Her Majesty the Queen. This is BBC News. We're interrupting our schedules for the following announcement. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. A statement from the palace said, The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. This is BBC News. Normal programmes have been suspended because of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. A statement issued by Buckingham Palace a few minutes ago said, The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Thank you, Chris. You're listening to BBC News broadcasting on the UK across all our networks in the UK and around the world following the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. This is Michelle Hussein with Evan Davis here in the studio. And if you're just joining us, Buckingham Palace has just announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The palace's statement said that the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort they said, will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. So that's the news that we had just in the last few minutes after several hours of reporting the public statements earlier in the day about the health of the Queen that Buckingham Palace had said, that her doctors were concerned and then we knew in the last few hours that members of her family, all four of her children and Prince William, her grandson, the Duke of Cambridge, had all travelled to be with her at Balmoral and that is where they were before this announcement was made. Well, our royal correspondent, Johnny Diamond, has been um, covering this uh, throughout. Balmoral is a place that was special to her, Johnny. It it was special to her. It was a a place of enormous peace and tranquillity to the Queen, uh, a place where she spent all her summers, uh, long summers there, a place of privacy, a place of family, um, and a remote place as well for a woman who spent her life in the public eye as really no other figure of the 20th and 21st century has done. And with this 26-word statement, this briefest of statements from Buckingham Palace, an era has come to a close. Um, Indeed, the, Johnny, the, the, the Royal Family's official website carries the message Queen Elizabeth II, 1926 to 2022, along with that uh, official statement that we've, uh, 
that we've been giving you. It's not just a, a life that has come to a close, Evan. It, it is an era and also a way of life because a life of service has come to an end. Life, it should be said that the Queen was not actually born to. She was not born to succeed to the throne and she did not choose to either. But at 25 years old, it came to her and she gave her life to it in a way that is perhaps inconceivable to any except those who lived through the war that forged her sense of service. Um, we'll hear the word service and duty many times in the next few hours and days, but she was the exemplar of service. And with her passing, we will not see that kind of sacrifice, that sense of service again. People will be absorbing this news, of course, in this country, right across this country, and indeed in many other parts of the world as well. It's a, it's, it's an, it's a long, long life. She was 96 years old. It's an extraordinary dedication to duty over the course of that entire reign. And um, I mean, even several of her prime ministers were born after the beginning of her reign. So for, so for most people in this country, this will be the only monarch that they've ever known. Yes, I mean, for most people in this country, and of course, as you mentioned, Michelle, for many people in the countries over which she is their monarch as well, or I should say was their monarch. She was Queen of Australia, of, of Canada, of New Zealand. They had her too, and it was service to them that she gave as well. And there, there will be equal sense of shock and mourning, and surprise and disappointment at her passing. Well, just to say you're listening to BBC News, a special programme on the announcement of the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Let's hear a little bit of her, her own voice now. She acceded to the throne February 1952. She became, obviously, Britain's longest reigning monarch in September 2015, that was. And in 2022, this year, she marked 70 years on the throne, a symbol of stability and continuity in a world that has changed much, and her life, of course, underpinned by devotion to duty, fulfilling a promise she made on her 21st birthday in 1947. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. In 1947, Princess Elizabeth married Philip, Prince of Greece, who would remain her consort and a source of support for the rest of his life. It was fewer than five years after her wedding that her father, King George VI, died. The Queen's coronation in June 1953 was memorably the first to be broadcast on television. It drew an audience of millions. God crown you with a crown of glory and righteousness that having a right faith and manifold fruit of good works, you may obtain the crown of an everlasting kingdom by the gift of him whose kingdom endureth forever. Amen. Amen. Until 2021, of course, the Queen had Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, by her side, her husband of 73 years. And, of course, at their golden wedding anniversary in 1997, she made clear how grateful she was for his long-lasting support. He has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. And I and his whole family owe him a debt greater than he would ever claim or we shall ever know. At moments of national crisis throughout her long reign, the Queen offered words of unity and hope to the nation, most recently in her broadcast during the coronavirus lockdown in 2020. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. Mm. 2020. And then, of course, in June 2022, 
the Queen reached her platinum jubilee. In the celebrations, Prince Charles spoke of her long years of service as photographs of the Queen lit the walls of Buckingham Palace behind him. Your Majesty, Mummy. You have met us and talked with us. You laugh and cry with us. And most importantly, you have been there for us for these 70 years. You pledged to serve your whole life. You continue to deliver. That is why we are here. That is what we celebrate tonight. These pictures on your house are the story of your life and ours. So, Your Majesty, that is why we all say thank you. A moment from the Platinum Jubilee celebrations only a few months ago and we are expecting a written statement from the King as he now is very soon. We've also seen the lectern appear in Downing Street so we are expecting um, to hear the Prime Minister speak and we will go to that live as soon as she does. But Robert Hardman, um, author of many books on the Queen and the Royal Family, most recently Queen of Our Times, joins us now. Um, Robert, we've talked so often about the Queen and her contribution. Listening to um, the now King speak at the Platinum Jubilee, it feels as if that was her farewell to us and ours to her. Well, Michelle, I mean, it, it, it really, it, it's it's very hard to, to sort of sum up, I think, what we all feel right now. But I think in his words there, the, 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 the Prince of Wales as he was, King Charles as he is now, um, summed it up. You know, her story is the story of our lives, all our lives. She has been this constant. I mean, almost no one, with the exception of some very elderly people, can remember a time when she wasn't on the coins or on the stamps or on, on, on our screens on Christmas Day. Or, you know, we would turn to her at times of uh, great, uh, great crisis, but also times of great celebration. You know, she was always there. And I think the prospect of life with this enormous gaping hole in, our, in, the, in, the, in the national landscape, it's, it, it's going to take, uh, it, it, it really will take some, um, some getting used to. And I, I, I think, you know, you also there we heard uh, reference to um, Prince Philip and the important part, the, the vital part he played in, in the longest reign in our history. And her famous lines, of course, was, you know, he was her strength and stay. Well, I think the same applies to her. And her death coming, what, less than 18 months after his. We shouldn't forget she's our head of state. Um, she's mm. she's also head of state of, of more than a dozen other countries mm. and, of course, head of the Commonwealth. But she was also a mother and her four children who were there at Balmoral have lost their mother little over a year after losing their father. They both had long, full lives. But we should think of, of that and the, the personal loss for them. Yes, I mean absolutely. It's 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 first and foremost a a you know great family um, sadness. I mean it's it's a bereavement. Yes, of course she was the longest uh, lived, longest reigning monarch in our history. But there was still as it was still sort of unthinkable in a way. You know she she's been such a a constant. And so if that's how we're feeling, imagine how they are feeling. Um, and and that that is you know first and foremost that our, our, our thoughts go to the family. But as you say, I mean, the whole world will be reverberating tonight. Yes, there are 14 other countries of which she's head of state. She's head of state, or was head of state, of course, of, of, uh, of more of the Earth's surface than, and, than any other head of state. And, and over and above that, the Commonwealth, now 56 nations, nearly a third of the, of the, of the world's population. Um, are, are members of the Commonwealth to which she devoted her life. But I think just far beyond that, I mean, I'm quite sure that in countries over which she had no uh, jurisdiction, who owed her no uh, allegiance, countries which probably don't even speak English, they'll still be feeling that there's this great loss, this, 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 this figure who, who was on the throne before half the countries on earth today even existed in their present form. The only person in history who's met and known 14 US presidents. I mean, no one in America's ever done that. Um, you know, she is just this thread that runs through the, the post-war story of this nation and many others. And it's why she really will go down as one of the very greats. 
Yes, born nearly a century ago. Extraordinary change that she has um, seen and, um, and in, in the course of her reign in this country and, and beyond. Uh, someone was mentioning the Queen has reigned for more than the quarter of the life of the United States. An extraordinary, <laughs> really extraordinary period of change in the world. Um, we've, of course, been seeing lots and lots of reaction come in. Um, we're expecting... Liz Trust to say some words in Downing Street. The lectern is there. Uh, from the White House, after learning of Queen Elizabeth's death, says thoughts go to the Queen's family, uh, the family members, and to the UK people. Canada's Governor General said we offer our deepest condolences to the royal family on the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, pays tribute to the Queen's grace, dignity, and dedication. Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has tweeted the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth is a profoundly sad moment for the UK, the Commonwealth and the world. Her life was one of extraordinary dedication and service. On behalf of the people of Scotland, I convey my deepest condolences to the King and the Royal Family. John Major, former Prime Minister, for 70 years, Her Majesty the Queen devoted her life to the service of our nation, its well-being. At this moment of deep sadness... I believe we all stand hand in hand with the royal family as they grieve the loss of one so loved. Well, uh, I'm only reading you some of the messages that are flowing and I can't really quite keep up with them even. Um, oh, well, uh, Prime Minister Modi of, of India, Queen Elizabeth II, will be remembered as, as a stalwart of our times, provided inspiring leadership to her nation and people. And we are expecting to hear from Prime Minister Liz Truss very shortly in Downing Street. Um, Johnny Diamond uh, is with us here. Johnny, let's look back on this life because she was not born to be Queen, which actually seems pretty extraordinary when you think of how well she seemed to fit this role to which she dedicated her life. Yes, and and perhaps that came about partly because it was so early in her life that she took on the role um, she was, as you say, not not meant to be queen. Uh, it, that came about as a result of the abdication, her father becoming king. He died much earlier than many people expected. And just at the age of 25, she became queen. She had barely lived um, a few royal, you know, a, a royal tour and very little in the way of a youth because of so much of that was spent in the war at, at Windsor in these extraordinary circumstances, a war that really did define her. But so quickly she became um, a monarch that was, yes, loved, certainly, by some, respected by so many. Um, and over those decades, so rarely, so rarely put a foot wrong. And you might say, look, a lot of the job was ceremonial. A lot of the job was, uh, you know, set out for her. But there were many, many opportunities when the wrong thing could have been said, the wrong approach might have been taken. There were delicate affairs of state. There was how she might respond to various different um, accidents of fate. And yet, it, it is on the fingers of one hand that you can find errors and mistakes over seven long decades of service. It's very interesting, Johnny. Uh, I was talking to a historian who made the point that because her life has coincided with the rise of photography, recording, film, there is no person in history, in human history, whose life will have been recorded from a very young age through to their to their end. No president of the United States, no pope, nobody who will have had a life that has been followed as closely as Queen Elizabeth. And, and she understood so well the power of image, but also the importance of distance. Because yes, she was in the photographic age and in the age of radio, but perhaps sort of most outstandingly she was in the age of television um it was television that would take her uh, into so many homes and yet she never gave an interview she understood entirely that the mystique of monarchy in her eyes had to be protected from intrusion there would be the odd informal discussion with a, a friend or a confidant that might be recorded, but very little else apart from that. And that kept, that distance kept her in the eye of the public, but somehow out of its understanding as well. 
Johnny, thank you. Just a reminder, you are listening to BBC News, broadcasting on all our networks across the UK and around the world as well, following the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Buckingham Palace said that she died peacefully at Balmoral, which was her home in Scotland, earlier this afternoon. And we know that the King, Prince Charles, as he was, is there with her, along with the Queen's other children and her grandson, Prince William, as well. So that is the news that we had in the last uh, 30 minutes, nearly 30 minutes now. And Lorna Gordon, our correspondent, has been at Balmoral through the afternoon. Um, Lorna, what can you tell us? It's some time ago now that we saw members of the family arrive and subsequent to that, we had this statement. Yes, an entourage, a, a cavalcade, a motorcade of members of the royal family arrived here at Balmoral approximately two hours ago. Prince William driving one of the cars that swept into the main gates. This is ordinarily a very quiet part of northeast Scotland, extremely rural, surrounded by hills and heather. But since the news has come through that Her Majesty the Queen has died, the crowds have started to gather here on this narrow country road. I would estimate between 40 to 50 members of the public are here. Some are in tears, others are hugging each other. Some arrived to wish her family well and arrived to the news that the Queen had died. Um, They were shocked. People here are sad. They have a very close relationship. Many people here to the Queen. One lady told me that she would wave at members of the royal family as they pass by in their cars. Others have told me that they viewed the Queen as a neighbour, hugely protective of her and her family and tremendously sad at the news that has just come through that the Queen has died here as well. So they would have seen her, Lorna. Local people would have seen her summer after summer. Yes, she has a long relationship with this area and the neighbouring villages of Braemar and Ballata. Her and her family, regular visitors to the area. The Queen has spent most summers here since she was a child. She has a great deal of privacy when she comes to the estate, Uh, when she came to the estate. It is secluded, it is secure, it covers 50,000 acres of moorland and hills. She would often go for walks in the nearby mountains. Members of the public would pass her and on occasion chat to her in her security detail. The family was said to hold barbecues here. Every year the Queen would hold a ball as well, which uh, members uh, of the public and neighbours and friends would attend. It is an area which she was extremely fond of and is said by many to have considered the place where she was most comfortable. So there is some poignancy that this place where she felt most at home was the place where she got to spend these final days. And of course, those pictures just a couple of days ago, not ordinarily a place where she would carry out official duties. This is a a private residence here, but even towards this very end of this long reign, she was carrying out that unusual um, greeting of the incoming and outgoing prime ministers. And then of course, there was due to be the Privy Council remote meeting last night, which was cancelled, which was perhaps that first indication that all was not well. But it is a private residence. It is a place where, in the past, she's been able to relax, be with her family, enjoy the Scottish countryside. And this is where her family, her close family today, have gathered. Lorna, thank you very much. That's Lorna Gordon outside Balmoral. Yes, and we are just getting so much reaction now. New Zealand has hailed the extraordinary late Queen and proclaims the King as new head of state. Canada, Canada's Prime Minister Trudeau, the Queen, was a constant presence in their lives and her service to Canadians will forever remain an important part of our country's history. 
coming up now to seven o'clock and you're listening to a baby bbc news special this is a special this is bbc news with michelle hussein and evan davis and we're marking the death of queen elizabeth ii we will be remembering the queen's life and hearing from those who've observed her close up her long reign but here now is chris aldridge with a summary of what we've heard in the last few minutes In the past half hour, Buckingham Palace has announced that the Queen has died. In a statement, the Palace said that the Queen, who was 96, died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. Flags at Buckingham Palace and at Downing Street have been lowered to half-mast as a mark of respect. Earlier this afternoon, all four of the Queen's children travelled to Balmoral, where she had been staying since July, after her doctors raised concerns about her health. Prince William is also at the estate and Prince Harry is travelling there separately. Buckingham Palace said the new King and Queen Consort would remain at Balmoral this evening before returning to London tomorrow. Britain will now enter a period of national mourning. Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon said her life had been one of extraordinary dedication and service. The Liberal Democrat leader Sir Ed Davies said the Queen had served our country faithfully all her life and was loved the world over. The former Prime Minister, Sir John Major, said she had been an example of duty and leadership for so very many years, and we had all lost someone very precious to us. His successor as Prime Minister, Sir Tony Blair, said the UK had lost not just its monarch, but the matriarch of the nation, who more than any other brought the country together. Gordon Brown said the Queen had served the country to the last. The leader of the Catholic Church in England and Wales, Cardinal Vincent Nichols, called her a shining light in our history. Tributes to the Queen are coming in from around the world. The French President Emmanuel Macron said that throughout her reign, Elizabeth II had been a friend of France. The President of the European Parliament, Roberta Metzola, said she was truly Queen Elizabeth the Great.